The Rankine cycle used in conventional thermal power plants can also be represented on a TS diagram. As with the Brayton cycle, each line segment in the diagram corresponds to a process in the cycle. A simple Rankine cycle consists of only four components, a boiler, a turbine, a condenser, and a boiler feed pump. The first process in the Rankine cycle is pressurizing the condensate by the boiler feed pump. In this example, the increase in pressure is assumed to occur with no increase in entropy, although in reality there is a slight increase. The increase in pressure is represented by the vertical line 1, 2. The second Rankine cycle process involves the addition of heat to the water entering the boiler, the conversion of the water from a liquid to steam, and the superheating of the steam. This process is assumed to occur at a constant pressure. This process is represented on the TS diagram by line 2-3. Line 3-4 represents the expansion and cooling of the steam as it passes through the turbine. This process is also idealized in that it is assumed that there is no increase in entropy. The last process represented by line 4-1 is the condensation of the steam exhausted from the turbine. In the process of condensation, a considerable amount of heat is lost. Drag and drop labels for the Rankine Cycle TS diagram. The heat required to make the Rankine cycle work is determined by the area under the curve 2-3 and the heat lost from the cycle is under the curve 4-1. The area between the curves represents the amount of heat converted to useful mechanical energy. The useful mechanical energy is only about one-third of the heat required to make the cycle work. Rankine cycle performance can be analyzed by referring to a typical idealized power plant cycle. If the steam pressure at the turbine inlet is 1400 PSIA and the temperature is 1000 degrees Fahrenheit, then the efficiency of this idealized plant is 41.5%. The efficiency of an actual Rankine cycle plant with the same configuration would be lower. Actual Rankine cycle plants are considerably more complex than the basic cycle. Components such as feed water heaters and reheaters are added to improve cycle efficiency. While most of the additions to the Rankine cycle improve its efficiency, there are also factors in a real Rankine cycle that tend to make it less efficient. For example, not all of the chemical energy supplied to the boiler from the fuel is absorbed by the steam. Typically only 85 to 90 percent of the energy input is absorbed. This means that the boiler is only 85 to 90 percent efficient. Other inefficiencies may result from the use of auxiliary equipment such as fans and soot blowers. Auxiliary equipment typically uses approximately 5% of the power produced. Actual Rankine cycle efficiency is lower than that calculated for the cycle alone. In reality, Rankine cycle efficiencies range from 20 to 39%. Label heat converted to work by the Rankine cycle and heat rejected from the Rankine cycle. The Rankine cycle in its simplest form consists of which of the following? In the simple cycle mode of operation, the temperature of the exhaust gas leaving a combustion turbine can be as high as 1100 degrees Fahrenheit and flow rates can be as high as 3 million pounds per hour. High temperature gas represents a source of heat energy, some of which can be recovered. By recovering some of this waste heat, the output and the efficiency of a power plant can be increased. The function of a heat recovery steam generator, or HERSIG, is to recover the waste heat from the combustion turbine exhaust gases. 
The heat recovered is used to generate high pressure, high temperature steam. This steam is used to generate additional power in a steam turbine driven generator. The HERSIG is the link between the Brayton cycle and the Ram The HERSIG is a heat exchanger composed of a series of superheater, evaporator, and economizer sections. These sections are positioned from gas inlet to gas outlet to maximize heat recovery from the combustion turbine exhaust gas. The heat recovered in the HERSIG is used to supply steam to the steam turbine at the proper temperature and pressure. Rankin cycle in a combined cycle plant. HERSIG designs have evolved from simple, single pressure HERSIGs to arrangements that are more complex. Many HERSIGs have multiple pressures, a reheat section, emissions control equipment, and condensate preheating to recover as much heat from the exhaust gas as possible. The rate of heat transfer from the exhaust gas to the HERSIG water depends on the temperature and pressure of the gases, the gas velocity and direction of flow over the tube surfaces, and the tube surface cleanliness. The temperature and pressure of the gases are determined strictly by the design and operation of the combustion turbine in most combined cycle plants. Some plants, however, have supplemental fuel firing in the duct between the combustion turbine exhaust and the HERSIG. The supplemental firing of these duct burners raises both gas temperature and gas mass flow. The design of the HERSIG for a particular application depends on many factors. The cost of equipment, availability of auxiliary power, and maintenance requirements must be compared with expected savings. A small HERSIG with closely spaced tubes will cost less than a larger unit. However, closely spaced tubes may increase combustion turbine exhaust back pressure and result in decreased turbine efficiency. Other important factors influencing design include the available space, desired reliability, nature of the exhaust gases, and process operating conditions. The function of a HERSIG is to perform which of these functions? Most HERSIGs are designed with multiple pressures. Multiple pressures are necessary to recover as much heat from the flue gas as possible due to the nature of heat transfer from the exhaust gas to the water and steam. As the flue gas travels through the HERSIG heat transfer sections, its temperature falls as the gas gives up heat to the water and steam in the HERSIG tubes. At some point, the gas temperature falls to the same temperature as the saturation temperature of the steam and water in that section of the HERSIG. At this point, no further heat transfer can take place. When this situation occurs, the flue gas cannot be cooled further by the heat transfer section. If the high pressure in the HERSIG is 900 PSIG, the saturation temperature of the steam water in the HERSIG is about 530 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest gas temperature that will provide effective heat transfer is somewhat higher than this temperature. The difference between the flue gas temperature and the saturation temperature where it leaves the high pressure heat transfer section is called the pinch point. In this example, if the gas temperature leaving the highest pressure heat transfer section were 550 degrees Fahrenheit, the pinch point would be 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The pinch point generally has a value of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. The gas at this point in the HERSIG still has considerable heat energy that can be recovered by adding an additional lower pressure heat transfer section to the HERSIG. Since this heat transfer section operates at a lower pressure, it has a correspondingly lower saturation temperature. If the lower pressure were 125 PSIG, the saturation temperature would be about 335 degrees Fahrenheit. The gas temperature could be reduced to about 360 degrees Fahrenheit with a second pinch point of 25 degrees Fahrenheit. More heat can be recovered from the flue gas by the addition of more heat transfer sections operating at even lower steam pressure. HERSIGs with as many as four different pressures have been built. Often heat transfer sections that heat condensate and feed water are also used. Such heat transfer sections are called economizers or feed water heaters. Regardless of the number of pressures at which the HERSIG operates and or the types of heat transfer sections, HERSIG efficiency can be maximized by reducing the temperature of the turbine exhaust gas as much as possible. 
There are practical limits to how much the exhaust gas temperature may be reduced. The most significant of these limits results from sulfur in the fuel. Sulfur is present in the form of sulfur dioxide in the combustion turbine exhaust gas. If the flue gas is cooled below the saturation point of the water, moisture contained in the exhaust gas condenses. The condensing moisture mixes with the sulfur dioxide to form sulfuric acid. The acids formed are very corrosive and can quickly damage the HERSIC. The temperature at which the acids are formed is called the acid dew point. Every effort is made in design and operation of the HERSIG to assure that the flue gas is not cooled below the acid dew point. Operation below the acid dew point can quickly result in corrosion damage to the HERSIG casing and heat transfer sections. In some HERSIGs, the last heat transfer sections are made of corrosion resistant stainless steel as a precaution against corrosion. Stainless steel is used because these heat transfer sections are subjected to the coolest flue gas and thus are most likely to experience condensation and acid attack. If a combined cycle plant has a multi-pressure HERSIG, the steam turbine must be designed with multiple admissions, one for each pressure. Multiple admissions are necessary so the steam at the various pressures from the HERSIG can be admitted to the steam turbine steam path at a point that maximizes use of the energy in the steam. The difference between the flue gas temperature and the steam saturation temperature in a HERSIG is which of these terms? Combined cycle refers to a power plant in which a combustion turbine is integrated with a Rankine cycle unit. The Rankine cycle makes use of the heat remaining in the combustion turbine exhaust gases. Thermodynamically, the combined cycle can be represented by joining the high temperature Brayton cycle with the moderate pressure and temperature Rankine cycle. This temperature entropy diagram illustrates a combined cycle. The area enclosed by the Rankine cycle is within the area representing the heat rejected from the Brayton cycle. Therefore, the Rankine cycle area represents heat energy converted to useful mechanical energy. This heat would otherwise be rejected to a large portion of the heat lost from the Brayton cycle is used in the Rankine cycle. A much greater fraction of the heat added to the cycle is actually converted to useful mechanical energy in the combined cycle than either the Brayton cycle or the Rankine cycle alone. A large portion of the heat lost from the Brayton cycle is used in the Rankine cycle. The Rankine cycle pressure and temperature are selected to match the temperature of the available combustion turbine exhaust gases. Usually, the Rankine cycle portion of the combined cycle plant operates at lower temperatures and pressures than those used in conventional Rankine cycle plants. The lower pressure and temperature are necessary because the combustion turbine exhaust gas, while very hot, is not nearly as hot as the flue gas entering the convection pass of a conventional fired boiler. The challenge in joining the Brayton and Rankine cycles in a combined cycle plant is determining the degree of integration needed to maximize efficiency at an economic cost. A combined cycle can consist of a single combustion turbine, HERSIG, steam turbine, condenser, and auxiliary systems. A variety of more complex configurations is possible. Label these thermodynamic cycles. Select the pair of terms which makes this statement correct. 